Oh, my brother Jimmy gave me a little note here. Make sure your fly is closed and your pants aren't falling down. <laughs> your father is watching. He used to say that to me like 10 times a day, my old man. Am I okay? Well, don't stare. I was asked to say a few words about my dad. And I looked around the room the other day at those who came and who were there. My dad was a great guy. He was always surrounded by great people. Now, I didn't always appreciate my dad or the people around him. Truth is, dad was always there, always there for us, as are the people who are in this room today, people who cared about people. It took me personally a lifetime, a lifetime of working in small room, eight to 12 hours a day, one-on-one -on -one as a hypnotherapist, listening to people's stories, their dreams, their failures, their success. And one major factor that seems to have been a common thread amongst those who have shared, they didn't have the consistency in their lives of having someone they could rely upon. No one there in their lives in time of need that they could turn to. My dad was that kind of person, the kind you could turn to. And so are many people who have been in this room for the last two days. People who make humanity work. People who know how to bring out the best in people. To get them to go far beyond what you thought was humanly possible, to feel appreciated, to feel needed. My dad and my mom, let's not forget Grandma Kitty, were experts at bringing out the best in people. Showing sides of themselves they didn't know they were capable of. Now, when you grow up in that environment, you just naturally expect the world to be there for you, caring. But the world's not like that. The people in this room create these worlds. The neighborhood we grew up in was a hostile and dangerous place run by dangerous men. Kitty, my dad's mother, was an extraordinary woman, creating that safe space where people felt appreciated, where people could feel vulnerable. Now, my dad was creative, talented. He could build anything, as everyone knows. He started out by building elegant handcrafted designer wooden radiator covers that were both decorative and functional. Many kids growing up in the neighborhood fried their hands on those old radiators. Right, Joey? <laughs> when dad entered the shipping industry, his perfectionistic attitude he, would, he so fit the needs of a new, growing, emerging industry. He could, in drawing and design, he was so organized, plan out balance where cargo would be laid in the ships of the day so they could safely cross the sea. So good was Dad that he was promoted to the ranks on his own merit. Captains would not set their ships out in turbulent seas unless my father checked the plans looked it over and gave his okay. Dad was in the shipping industry in his infancy. He winged it. He created innovations back then which became the industry standard. My dad was an ever-expanding encyclopedia of how to make things work. He could build anything. He was a perfectionist. But I want you to look around today. Look around at the people in this room who made up that inclusive family of my dad. His sister, my Aunt Joan, she was no different than her mom, than my father. She was there for all of us. Cosmo, who had to leave, and our extended family. He went from being a medic in the army to being the most highly trusted and innovative hospital administrator of the century. Just like his father, Vito, those of you who had the privilege to meet him. As a kid, Dad worked around the clock. He wasn't around. Cosmo's father, Vito, was like a substitute father to me and every other kid in the neighborhood. Vito was a protector of children. His son, Cosmo, ended up becoming a protector of people. Jim Gary, is he here? No, Jim. 
was a great friend. He was loved and appreciated by my dad. And Jim, you're one of the last few alive. That way. As I tell people at this point, I, I've outlived my lifetime warranties. Jim's here, and I appreciate it, Jim. Tommy Ryan, another one of my dad's very good friends, an industry character, a man who was well known, who had one wife, 27 girlfriends, and 347 children that we know of. A man that never stopped smiling. Well, sadly, Tommy's gone, but his son Arthur flew in this week to be popular. My family, Dad's family, way too many people to speak about in this room. Father John, it wasn't real to me until you showed up today. My mom, my sis, Coralia, Joey, Jimmy, his caretaker, Melanie. And I could talk about my dad all day long. In the last few years, since his loving wife, Natalia, passed, we became best friends. A relationship which, because of his round-the-clock hours while I was growing up, that the industry was in required, was filled in by the people in this room today. To speak about my dad, it would be neglected not to speak about all the people in this room and those who have touched our lives that have passed. Dad wouldn't want that. He wouldn't want anyone left out, anyone forgotten. I'm thankful to be a part of Dad's life, to have him as a father. I'm thankful to be a part of every one of your lives. Because otherwise, it would have just been a one-way conversation. Thank you, Dad. And my dad would thank everyone here. If Dad's looking down, I hope he's not looking up. I'm sure you made his day, just like everyone in this room made his life. Thank you. And so this concludes our services today here at the Crematory Chapel. A private cremation will take place under our funeral homes directly.